All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be putting this engine back together. We got all our parts in. We got the cylinders back from the machine shop. These are freshly bored out. So we're going to go ahead and start putting this back together. But first, we got to chase these threads out uh, with a tap and die set here just to get all the, you know, if there's Loctite down in there, anything that could cause it to hang up when we're putting the bolts back in. I'm going to go ahead and run through all these bolts. There's two different size bolts for this crankcase, the M10 by 1.5. A small bolt m8 by 1.25 we're gonna go ahead and just run these through i'm gonna to cut to a time lapse because it's gonna be kind of repetitive but let's get to it Chased out, ready to finally put this thing together. The first thing we're gonna do is put this rotary shaft in. I already stuck mine in the freezer just to get it to shrink down as much as I can. You don't want to hammer on it too much when it's frozen though, because you don't want it to crack. But I just wanted to uh, get it a little bit smaller just to slide it in there, and then I'll let it warm up and hammer it in some more. So. to the other part of the case here. Now we're gonna start putting our gasket maker around all the mating surfaces here. I got Loctite 518. Um, you can use the Permatex equivalent or you know whatever's available by you, but we're gonna start putting this all over. Just a nice thin even bead. Okay, it's really important to make sure you get inside these chamfers for the crankshaft. As you can see here, I'll show you. Those oil seals go down in there and that helps them stay in place and keep them from spinning while the engine's going because that will cause it to leak oil as well. In addition to having these chamfers done, make sure you get right here where the balance shaft seals. There's an oil seal on here. Make sure that's done up good. So anywhere where you see a chamfer or the oil seal there, if you want, you can pause the video, take a screenshot, and just how I have it in this picture is how you want to do it on yours. Okay, I just pounded this the rest of the way in. As you can see that the shiny metal is fully in there. It's almost up to the C-clip, and you're able to get the snap ring in on the front there. That's what you're really looking for. Sometimes that oil seal will walk itself up, so make sure you push it down and it's far enough down that you can get that snap ring in there. This isn't the one for that, but it looks just like this. It's just smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and put a thin coat on this guy too. Same spots as the other half. Okay, now we're ready to drop this crankshaft in. Also, there's little pins on these bearings, and there'll be relief cuts. So you want to make sure that all those are lined up. Okay, now that we got all our pins down, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this 518 on the seals themselves, just to help it 
really seat in place and make sure these don't spin. Go ahead, get these nice little coat here. And the next thing we're gonna do is put our balance shaft in. I'm gonna take a real light amount of 518 and put it on this as well. Okay, next we're gonna figure out our timing on our balance shaft here. There'll be a little notch out in that specific tooth. Needs to meet up with the timing mark on here. Some of these cranks are backwards, so hopefully yours is on the front. If not, it's a little harder because it'll be on the back here, but I'll go ahead and rotate this around. And there's our timing mark there. So that's what we need to line up with that tooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in there. It's kind of hard to do two-handed and you're not gonna be able to see it really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll get back. Okay, we got it dropped in. The easiest way to get that in there when they're backwards like that is to put your finger on that tooth because you can't see both sides at the same time, but you can see which one your finger's on and you can make sure they're lined up that way. Just make sure you get it right on. The other thing you wanna check is make sure that your seal, your oil seal here on this shaft is in the right spot. You'll kinda of see a cutout for it in the case itself. So make sure that's in the right spot. Make sure you got 518 on there and then make sure everything spins easy. Nothing's getting bound up. See like right here, I just saw a little bit of an issue. There's 518, I got a little over overshoot here on the balance shaft we're going to get that off okay now that we got that taken care of again just double check make sure nothing's binding up make sure all your dowels are down just do a quick once over my engine's in time here everything's spinning perfectly as it should now we're going to move on and put the seals in first i'm going to start with the balance shaft seal. We're gonna put a little bit of 518 around this. See, we got Loctite around it there. We're gonna wait till the end to put our snap ring in, that little groove right there. This is butted up against there. Now we're gonna move on to the crank seals. All right, we got our crankshaft seal right here. We're gonna go ahead and put some 518 on this thing. We're gonna go ahead and slide this on. We're gonna put our shim back in. The shim actually goes in this little slot right here and then you wanna butt that seal up against the shim. Okay, everything's looking good. We're gonna go ahead and put the top of our case on. Now we're gonna flip the case over and put the case bolts in. If you wanna pause and take a screenshot, this is the torque specs and the foot pounds that they need to be torqued to in the sequence as well. Make sure you run a small bead of Loctite on each bolt here. We're gonna to torque the big bolts down to 30 foot pounds here in the same sequence.
Now we're gonna move on to the small bolts and the small bolts are 17 foot pounds. All right, now we got them all torqued down. Flip this back over. We can go around, wipe the edges off so you don't track it all over your engine. Get all the squeeze out. So I'm just gonna go around with some acetone and the rag. Okay, now we got all the squeeze out cleaned up. Make sure you put your snap ring back in here. Then we're gonna go ahead and put the flywheel housing on. First, we're gonna pop this seal in. Get us some 518 here. this down now. All right guys, now that we got our flywheel housing on, we're gonna go ahead and pre-lubricate our counterbalance shaft, which if you remember is over on this side. There's a fill hole right there. You're gonna do 40 milliliters of two stroke oil. Um, I'm just using break-in oil, because that's all I got laying around, but Whatever two stroke oil you're fine with being in your motor, it's up to you. Just go slow with this so you don't lose any, because if you lose some, you're not gonna know how much you lost, and you gotta make sure you get 40 milliliters in there, so. Okay, now that we're all filled up with oil here, we're gonna go ahead and put our pistons on. We got to do that before we put the cylinders on. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put one snap ring in on one side. So it's a little easier to put on. All right, now we got one snap ring in. Now we're going to take some assembly lube and put it on our wrist pin bearing here. Just to kind of... that guy in there. Uh, our wrist pins in, we're gonna go ahead and put our piston on. This arrow needs to point towards the exhaust side, which is also the same side as this rotary cover here. So make sure it's facing this side. And go ahead and get our wrist pins started here. So you wanna just get it to that edge, not too far though. Make sure your arrow's facing the right way. We're going to go ahead and slide this. Push it all the way in until it hits that other C-clip. And we're going to go ahead and put our C-clip on the other side here. Just start it at one end and walk it on in. Make sure it seats all the way, which it has. And we're gonna go ahead and put our piston rings on. The flat ring here goes on the bottom. As you can see, there'll be a little guide pin here for where the end of your ring is supposed to go. So you want the end to sit right there. And you just wanna walk it on just like that. And we're gonna take our second ring with the bevel facing up you can see there's a little like lip around here that's got to be facing up 
And make sure you line that up with the pin on the top as well. Just like that, we got ourselves lined up. We're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Make sure when you put your cylinder on, make sure that these are exactly in the spot where they need to be because they can kind of slip past the dowels unless they're tight like this so all right now we're going to go ahead and put our base gasket on so we can get to putting these cylinders on your gasket kit most likely will give you three different size base gaskets i just picked the metal one because some people say supposedly different thicknesses will change your compression and stuff i don't see how it'd make like that much of a difference but to be safe, I'm just going to pick the one in the middle. You can do whatever you want. But that's all I'm going to do. I'm sure there's a way to test the squish out and all that. But when I was looking through it, there wasn't really any clear answers. And when people I talked to, they just said, just use the middle one. It doesn't really matter. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go ahead and put some 518. Just all around here. Make sure your dowel pins are lined up. Okay, now that we got the cylinders on, we're gonna go ahead and torque them down to 30 foot pounds. First, we're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the bolts before we run them through. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and line up the exhaust here. This will help align the cylinders. Now we're gonna make sure we go through and wipe out the top of our cylinders here and the little grooves. Cause there's an O-ring that goes here and then your water jug seal that goes here. So you just wanna go through and just wipe that out, make sure there's nothing in there. Keep everything from sealing up. Just real quickly go over it. We're gonna go ahead and put our water jug seals in. Put a little bit of 518 on here just to help these stick in here because they do pop out pretty easily we're not really doing it to seal it it's just more kind of hold it in place slack but if you keep working it around sometimes it'll kind of push itself out or you can try throwing stuff in the freezer that always can work too all right now we're ready to go ahead and put the cylinder head on so we're going to grab our two o-rings that came in our gasket kit we're going to go ahead and put those around here and we're going to take our o-ring here that goes on the top of this We'll 
That's what I was saying about Slack being in it. But if you keep just kind of working it out, eventually it'll push itself somewhere. Problem is that these are elastic. So every time you're like pushing it in there, you're kind of stretching it at the same time. And that's where you get that extra slack from. So don't freak out and think it's the wrong one. Just keep trying as you see it laid all the way flat. So, okay, we're ready to go ahead and throw this cylinder head on. Make sure the side with the one tab, not the two, goes on the side with the exhaust. So we're gonna go ahead and put these two together. This you'll see right away if it doesn't line up, but these go like this. And we're gonna go ahead and just hand start a couple of these. Just hold down. If you want to pause it, take a screenshot or something. Okay, now that all these cylinder head bolts are torqued down, we're going to go ahead and throw this flywheel on here. You'll see there's a little cutout here for a keyway. Here's the keyway right here. I actually ended up losing mine, so I kind of had to custom make this, so make sure you hold on to yours. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite on here just to hold it in place, because it does slide around a lot. Just nothing major, just a little bit, just to help it stick in there. And we'll put a little bit of this on the threads here. That should be all we need. All right, we're gonna go ahead and slide this flywheel on here. And we're gonna torque this nut down to 81 foot pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. To torque it down, they either make a little tooth thing that will bolt in here, like a professional tool for it, that'll lock this in place, or a lot. What a lot of people do is stuff a rag in here. So it'll kind of put some pressure on it there. So we're gonna go ahead and. There we go. I'll do that. Pull the rag back out. So now this is torqued down there. We're going to go ahead and put our... I'm not sure what this is called. You'll see on the back of the oil pump here, there's a little like shaft thing. And that's what drives the oil pump itself. So that goes right into the end of the crankshaft here. I've seen different styles of these, so yours might look a little different, but this is just how mine looks. I still haven't decided if I'm going to run this or premix. I have the block off plate. I'm just going to decide later. I've heard mixed reviews from both. Some people say it's better and more reliable. Others say that this is just a better engineered system that they don't really go bad. So I'm just going to have to make up a decision on it. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and put this PTO coupler on here, but first we gotta add the motor mount bracket piece that goes on beforehand. So that we'll, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and then we'll get to torquing that down. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and torque this PTO flywheel on here now that we got this bracket on. So first I'm just gonna kinda of get it on there hand tight. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the other flywheel. We're gonna go ahead and stuff a rag in one of the cylinders here. And we got our spline tool that goes on the end of here. Pull our rag out. Make 
sure everything spins over. Now we're going to go ahead and time our rotary valve here on the, the rotary valve cover. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and put the snap ring back in. All right, guys, now we're going to time our rotary valve. So to do that, we're going to have to find top dead center on the magneto side piston. What I do is I'll stick a extension in there. It's just what I like to do. You can use a screwdriver or whatever. But you keep going until it goes up. Find right where the top is. When I turn it a little bit, it goes down. When I turn it the other way, it goes up and then back down again. So you want to get it where it just, it's right at the top. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna find 360 degrees on our degree wheel here. We're gonna take that 360 degree line and then we're gonna go at the bottom of this port and then we're going to find 147 degrees. So you see here's 140 and 150 are right here. Mine's already marked. You might be able to see it, but you're going to want to make a hash line. So you'd find 147, make that hash line, and that's going to be where the edge of your rotary valve goes. So then you're going to take your rotary valve. You're going to find where that meets that line there's my hash line right there it hits that that's top dead center next I'm gonna take my rotary cover here I'm gonna put my o-ring on so you just want to work this around sometimes these sometimes these will fly off too so just take your time be careful it can be a little challenging but you just gotta like inch it down we're gonna take our cover here and just start it by hand Snugged up. There we go, we are all timed. And now we have a rebuilt engine. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, this helped you out. Stay tuned and keep watching the series.